sweet baby. Okay, there we go. Hi there, Michelle here, and welcome back to my channel. In today's video, I'm making another checkerboard sweater. Okay, so I made this sweater almost a year ago. I think it was like May 2022 when I done, when I finished it, when I did it. And I really loved these colors at the time. I still love the colors now. I wanna do it again. I wanna do it kind of in the same colors, but also different. Yeah. <laughs> pretty much doing the exact same project as last year. This is again, I don't think I have to mention this anymore because I haven't made a tutorial in months, but it's not a tutorial. But if you wanna know how to do a checkerboard sweater, what I'm wearing right now was actually a tutorial video, which I will link in the description if y'all wanna like check that out. And then I also have a checkerboard, it's a smaller checkerboard, crocheted bag, which I also have a tutorial. What's gonna be different about my new one compared to this is one, obviously, colors, but I'm actually gonna be making the squares a little bit smaller. The crocheted bag that I did was five five crochets across for each square. This one was 15. The new one is gonna be 10. They're gonna be about two thirds of this size. I just think that because these are so vibrant, I think the smaller it is, I think the more like punch it's gonna be in your eyes. <laughs> this is gonna be bright, it's gonna be loud, it's gonna be in your face. Michael's had a sale the other day and uh, I bought all the yarn for it and it cost me 50 bucks. Plus another yarn, which was that Black Bernat yarn. And if you watch that video where I had that fiasco. Yeah, that's a little bit of a problem. I had to buy another yarn for it. And I learned my lesson and I looked at the dye lots. Okay, so all these pink ones. They're all the same dye lots. So they're all gonna be the same color. And then I looked at the orange and they're all the same. They're all gonna be the same shape. I just thought that these two vibrant colors would look so good together. And last year, I would kinda, I think I saw like a purse or a bag or, I think it was a makeup bag actually. And it had these lighter, pastel like orange and pink colors to it. The pink even might have been a nice light lavender, which like I was kind of thinking. I was kind of thinking about doing a lavender, kind of doing a mock-up on Procreate where I was like drawing it out and seeing what colors look good. When I put the purple with the orange, like doing this, they look good, but when you multiply it by a bunch of squares, the purple just didn't look right. It was kind of going more blue, more gray. It didn't have the punch I wanted. And I'm like, you know what? I'm just gonna go with this really bright pink and this really bright orange orange. Let me just tell you what they are. It is impeccable. Pink color here is called Lippy and the orange color is called Orange Crush. Now I have used Orange Crush in the past. I really like this color. This pink color, I don't think it's new, but I've never used this color before. I always use like the rose color in Impeccable, but I've never actually used this color for anything and it's really pretty. I just have to get into the pattern. I really like this shape and I think what is it? It's like fifth. It's what is it? One, two, three, four, five, six. What is six times 15? I don't know. That's math. Nothing's going on in this head with math. I also like my other sweater that I did, which I just did. And that was 90 across, but I think I want to make it even. I think I want to make it like 80. So it's like, it starts with one color and then it ends with another color. Yeah. Cause this like, this is even across. This is six across. 80 will be good. So that'd be like 10, 10, 10, 10. So I think that's what I'm gonna do. I think I'm gonna do 80 chains across for the front and the back. The arms, I am gonna have to do a little bit of math. I will be using a five millimeter crochet hook for this project. And I'm actually gonna be using my new crochet hook that I got from Furls, which I did do an unboxing video. If you haven't checked that out, check it out. And they gifted me a few really cute crochet hooks and I have just been waiting to use this. I have high hopes. My hopes are so high. They're so high for this project because I've already done it. It's just that math part that's just gonna probably mess me up, but we'll see. I'm just really excited to start this project. I started it. Literally just finished my last project yesterday, which was the Fall Out Boy sweater. And today I started the new project. Like I said, I'm gonna be doing 10 across and I think I'm gonna be doing, that's one, two, three, four. I think I'm gonna do five rows up. But right now they're not really a square. So I think one, like one more row, I think will work. So I'll have to see. I also started using my five millimeter furls crochet hook that I had just gotten. I'm getting used to it, but I noticed sometimes, and I don't know if it's with the yarn or it's because the inline of 
you know, the actual, the hook part, it is snagging the yarn a little bit. So we're just gonna keep moving forward and see how that works out. Like, I really like the grip. I really like the hook. It's just the actual hook part is just getting some used to. But I mean, I'm, it's, it's working pretty good so far. So I'm just gonna keep continuing and I'll probably give an update. I think either something goes horribly wrong or something new develops because honestly, I'm just making four square panels of this. So we'll see what happens. I have little baby Totoro. She's an outdoor cat, but she's slowly, slowly coming into the house, which is, she's just a baby. She's just a baby. I got the front panel or the back panel. Again, it doesn't matter what side is what. Totoro, are you being a ham? I do want to point out that I did do 10 stitches across and then I did six rows up, I believe. So it's like one, two, three, four, five, six. And then I ended up doing one, two, three, four, five, six, seven up and eight across. Right now, I'm kind of unsure if I wanted this length or not because I feel like the six squares was not enough, but I feel like seven might be too many. And now I'm going to go work on the back or the front or the front and the back, doesn't matter. But I'm going to do the, the body squares first and then I'll move on to the sleeves. Totoro looks so cute. Look at how cute she is. Oh, I'll just put that over here. Oh, but she's always so sad. So, so sad. Sad. Stressful parts of this particular project is doing the counting. So I counted 80 chains, but now I have to do like 10 chain, like 10 crochets of each color, 10 for one, then 10 for orange, 10 for pink, 10 for orange, etc. until the end. And it's like, did I do math right? Did I count right? Because if I get to the end and I'm like a few chains short, that's always fun. Or I might have too many chains. I'm counting as I go. Sometimes, sometimes it just doesn't work out that way. I like to put little stitch markers. So I have one here, I have one here, safety pins, whatever you have. But then that way I remember, this is this is because sometimes I forget that when I rotate it, the string kind of goes like over, like you can already see that I did it. It's like right there, right? I make sure that happens on the same side, the same side on both sides. So I know this is the inside. And that's why I put the little stitch markers. So that way I see the stitch markers. And I'm like, okay, make sure you're hiding that other color on the same side so that it doesn't show up on the front. If that makes any sense to y'all, this is what helps me make sure I remember which side I need to be turning it in order to hide the, you know, the opposite color. I hope that makes sense. I'm gonna make a little V shape here, like I would on... What? I'm talking to the camera. She's just really curious. A V shape, like I did on a sweater vest, because I wanna make a little cute collar like a pointed collar, not a Peter Pan collar, just a regular collar that the little triangle collar, you know? So I think a good plan is to make a little V shape right here so then I can have a place for the collar to sit so that way it's not like so close to like my neck, if that makes sense. I hope this goes okay. I've never crocheted a pointed collar. I usually just do like the mock neck on any of my projects, but I want to do a little, be a little, be a little different on this one. That's what we're going to try. So now I'm going to start creating the V here because I am on the seventh row and it is the last row that I need to do before I can start working on the sleeves. Just tested it here where it's supposed to be. I think it needs to be more on an angle because that's the height that I need it to be, but I need this to be pretty much over here, more like that. So I'm just gonna keep playing around with it and see how it goes. Look at that. Okay, maybe it's a little bit wonky down here. It's fine. I'm gonna have like a collar kind of covering it the entire time anyways. You know, I just wanted to get it as nice as I possibly can. Take it apart now because obviously I can't leave it like that, but I know what to do now, so that's fun. I quickly just wanted to pop on here to update you with the project. Last night I did finish the front piece. Wow, these are very bright. What I ended up doing is I made this little V cutout. And if you've been watching my channel for a while, every time I make a sweater, I always just do like that little mock neck kind of sweater. And one of my previous projects is, you know, like it's just like a little mock neck turtleneck. But for this one, I wanted to be a little bit different. I want to put just a regular triangle collar. I wanted to say cardigan. My mind was like cardigan, cardigan, cardigan. What's not cardigan? It's collar. Not a Peter Pan one. I feel like a Peter Pan one's like more the rounded. I just want like a pointed collar. But it sits like this. It's a little bit of a V and then the collar can just like kind of attach here. How I'm gonna make the collar? I don't know about that. 
I have no idea how I'm gonna make the collar. No idea. We're attempting something different. And if I don't like it, I can just undo this top row and just redo it. Okay, it will take me what some time to do. It's manageable. Think what I might do, and I normally don't do this. I usually make all of the parts and then connect all the parts. But I think for this, because of my plan, I don't wanna get too far ahead and think I have this idea and then it doesn't work out. And then I gotta like read this says what I'm doing. I am actually attach the front and the back first, try it on and come up with an idea for a cute little collar. Cause the collar itself is going to have to be made separately. And then I'm going to have to attach it here to get my vision where I want it to be. I need to make the collar first, get that over with and then the sleeves. Cause once, once the collar is figured out and put on, hopefully it turns out okay. I have nothing to worry about, but just the sleeves and the ribbing and like, you know. Also, if you've noticed the sweater is actually gonna be a little bit smaller than I typically make them. I'm actually kind of losing this much. And again, because I am doing the checkerboard pattern every time I change color, I kind of pull on the yarn. So these stitches, even though they are half double stitches, they are a little bit tighter, a little bit closer together. So it is a little bit smaller that way too. But you know what, I'm fine with it. It's still really baggy. I love this one. This one's great. This is the Fall Out Boy one, which I do have a video for. I feel like this one's just a little bit too big, so I kind of want to see what it'd be if I made the garment just a little bit smaller. It's still going to be a sweater, but I kind of want it to be like that sweater shirt kind of thing going on instead of just like a heavy sweater and obviously not a shirt because it's too thick for that. So we're just going to play around with it. That's another reason why I want to attach the front and back together to also like try it on and see how long I'm actually going to have to make the sleeves. Really try to work on the collar today. If the collar goes well, then I'll probably be able to start one sleeve. I don't, I don't think I'm that fast to have two sleeves done, but what's happening today? The collar. I was kind of looking at ideas for Pinterest on how other people have made them. And a lot of the photos I've seen were just like, you know, the single collar that you would just wear on its own and you would just have a little button on it. So I was just kind of making things up as I go along per usual. And this is kind of what I got. It's not bad. It's, it's okay. All I did was I made a chain of 50 and then I would just switch the colors in the back because you know, I want it, I want it to be opposite colors or you could do, you know, if you want to just do a solid one. And every time I got to the end here, so I would start here. Normally I would chain one and then, you know, you skip that chain and you move your way back like a normal crochet project. But for this, what I did is I would chain two, skip that one, and then I would go into the next chain. So I would be adding like an extra stitch to each row. And so that's kind of what it looks like. I think that if I were to do it different, I think I would make both colors separate and then attach them in the back because now this one I have to end it here so now I have to like tie in this little loop instead of like you know tying it say in the back it's fine I'm gonna move on if I were to like stitch back then this row would be a little bit longer than this one and I want them basically to be even so now what I'm gonna do is I'm going to tie this off and I'm gonna attach the collar to here and then I can start working on the arms this is how I'm attaching it I'm just using the clamps as always why I like using the clamps a lot of my project is because then I can do the placement now a one side isn't gonna have extra like or shortened, like if I do too many stitches here and then this won't reach, so if it's all clamped up, then I know where everything needs to go. She did it wrong. <laughs> I, I had to start and then I realized, because this is the good side, so what I did is I tucked it in and then that way I can fold it out when I'm done. So that way I can attach it this way and you won't see your sewed it together. Okay, so if you're ever wondering how I measure, like how long to make things, I, I wing it, okay? This is the collar, by the way. This one just, I think I need to like block it down so it stays flat, but I mean like it looks good. Also, I made the neck hole a little bit too small. It's fine, but I will literally take a tape measure and just do that. Like, like that, that's it, is I just take a tape measure and I just line it up. And I have to take into account that I do want a cuff. So I want my cuff to be probably three inches long. So to where my shoulder is sitting, that's about 17 inches, 17 minus three is 14. So if I go down to where 14 is, 14 is here. I, I also have really long arms, so like, yeah. But yeah, if I go to 14, it's gonna go to about here. And then like, I know my cuffs are gonna be around three inches, so it's fine. I quickly just wanna go over a little bit of the frustration that I am having with this yarn. And a little bit of it is because of the new hook that I'm using. Now, the only problem is, and I've mentioned this in the past, is that it is an inline hook. See how sharp 
that hook is where I'm used to a tapered hook and a tapered hook is has more of a, uh, a rounded hook on it. So I find with certain yarns, this hook just really like snags on the yarn. It will pull out little strands of the yarn. I'm only having this issue with the pink color, the orange color is really nice and I'm not having that problem. It's just this pink color and I don't know why. You saw me pick out the yarn. They're loops and thread and they're both in pickles. Both. So you think that the yarn consistency would be the same, but it's not. Like the actual yarn itself is different. I'm finding with this orange, it's just like a little bit thicker than the pink. And you can like, you can look at that. You can see how this is a little bit more holy, whereas this is a little bit more dense because the yarn is a little different. This orange yarn it's a little bit softer it's a little bit thicker i want to say it's even a little bit more cushiony if that makes any sense compared to this pink yarn this pink yarn is very thin straggly i really don't know how to describe it other than like i'm just not the biggest fan of this pink using this hook it's really causing a little bit of issue now like here's the thing i'm going to continue using this hook i love this hook but i just wish that this brand of yarn had a little bit better consistency between yarns because here's the thing if i pull i'm pulling tight so but can you kind of see that the orange is a little bit thicker than the pink you know what can you do i can't spend all day in a craft store comparing yarns you know i just picked two colors that i thought would look good together from the same brand and apparently that's still not good enough it's fine i'm moving forward it's just using an inline hook now uh, just giving me a little trouble with the pink yarn do you see this do you see this yarn right now i am having the worst luck with this pink yarn like first off my crochet hook does not want to bother with it this is the second time this has happened the yarn has been cut like not the whole yarn just a few threads because you can see that the yarn is made out of a bunch of different threads and a few of the threads have been sliced and now i end up with this like impeccable get your just get better orange yarn fine great having the time of my life with the orange yarn but this pink yarn not too happy about i couldn't really film myself doing it and holding the camera because i got a little bit lazy and i didn't want to set my tripod anywho what i did is i just have a cup of water and i just kind of like doused part of the collar that i wanted to block in the water so it's wet and then i got a, a tea towel and i kind of just like you know, try to dry it out just, just slightly. And then I got some pins and I just kind of pinned it down where I want it to be blocked. Now I have to like leave it for like a few days or a day or two to dry out. Now what I've learned is that acrylic yarn, you can't really block it to stretch it out like you can for I think cotton and wool, but you still can like block it out so it stays its shape. And I've done this a lot of times with like um, my granny squares, but I'll dry block them. If you watch my videos, then you know what I'm talking about. But anyways, I ended up getting these and these are exercise mats that I found at a winner's and it was a pack of four. They're pretty big and I got them for like 15 bucks. They're just foam. They're like, you know, like the kid foam play mats as well. And they're like puzzle pieces. If you don't want to spend the money on a blocking board, you can buy this stuff. The other thing though is blocking boards are a little bit thicker, whereas this, it's like only that thick. And blocking boards usually do have a grid on it. But I mean, for a cheap alternative, this is working fine. As you saw in that video, I just didn't feel like talking. But anyways, I did try it on and I used the little clamps here. I don't know how many times I have to tell you how handy these things are. Because one, like to hold your project together while you're sewing it together. But also, you can test it out by like clamping everything together and seeing how the fit is without actually having to like sew it together. Although this here is it's not 14, but it's a little more than 13 inches down. And yes, that's kind of originally what I said my plan was. And when my arm is stretched out, yes, that works. When I put my arm back down, you saw how like it shrunk up a little bit. So I'm just going to do six by six. It's six across and it's five down now. So I'm just going to do one more, just one more. Also, I've gotten really into heists. So I'm watching Ocean's 11 and then I'm going to watch Ocean's 12 and then I'm going to watch Ocean's 13. That's what I'm watching. That's what I'm doing tonight, finishing this and then probably starting the next sleeve or I might start the next sleeve tomorrow. Depends how I feel. I have this done. Oh my gosh, that is so bright on camera. You know which one's at Florida 3000? Did try to block this collar down, but it's still giving me a little bit of trouble. So I'll figure that out. So let's put this on. Oh God. And I got the sleeves done. Oh my gosh, these are like hurting my eyes in the in the view monitor. And I left them a little short again because I wanna put cuffs on it. I think this actually is looking pretty good. So all I have to do today is just attach the two sleeves to this because this is already attached in the center. I just need to fix this. If this collar doesn't wanna like stay down because it keeps doing that, I might just stitch it down and I might just stitch this one down too. Who's gonna know? I mean, you'll know, I'll know. 
Well, who else is gonna know? So it's fine. The only problem with this is that uh, once it's done, it does not want to come off my head. Sweet, maybe. Okay, there we go. It's fine when I'm wearing it. It's just putting it on and taking it off is a little difficult. I have attached everything. Well, I mean, I just attached the arms on to the front and back. Now I'm gonna work on the ribbing. And thankfully, because I write down notes, I was looking at the last Fall Out Boy sweater that I made and I wanna do the same like for the cuffs and the bottom ribbing. But I think I might, it says five skips for the sleeves. I think I might just do four because the sleeves, they're not as wide as the Fall Out Boy sweater. Was debating whether or not to like switch between the pink and the orange for the cuffs, but I'm just gonna keep it simple. I'm just gonna do pink. It's just gonna be easier that way. I'm coming across my last dilemma for this project. The last project I did for the ribbing, slip stitched through three stitches. So then now it was kind of cinched in, but I don't want this to be cinched in. And right now I'm kind of doing like slip stitch two, go up and down, then three, up, down, two, like, you know, two, three, two, three, two, three, like kind of going back and forth. But I'm not really liking how it's cinching in. I don't want this to like cinch in at the bottom like my other sweaters. I kind of want just to lay flat. To be fair, I'm kind of forgetting if I did three or if I did two. So sometimes I might've done like two threes in a row or two twos in a row, but I'm not really liking how it's kind of like puckering this right now. So I think I might take this apart. I really wanted to get this done today, but I don't think I'm gonna get this done today. I think I'm just gonna do two. This is the last thing that can go wrong. I, I hope it's the last thing that can go wrong. I hope so. I finished the ribbing. All I have to do, connect it together. Honestly, this ribbing, took me forever to do forever mainly because usually when i do the ribbing on the bottom i skip four or i skip three so i mean it goes by a little bit faster but i did everything by two it took a real real long time but i'm done i just have to attach it and then i can show you what it looks like it's done here it is this is what it's looking like it is hurting my eyes in my view monitor because it is so bright but i love it i think it turned out really cute i'm not surprised but i'm a little bit surprised I think it fits pretty good, except for the fact that I have to put it over my head and it's a little, little tight. Overall, I really like the fit of it. I like it when things look cropped like that, but then it's kind of uncomfortable, especially with like high-waisted jeans because I keep feeling like it's gonna like raise up every time I move my arm. So I feel like I wish it was this length, but also I feel like it's just, it will fit me better. and It'll be more comfortable for me to wear if it is like this. I think it actually turned out really good because this is probably on the smaller side of a crochet sweater that I've made. Usually I make them like way oversized. And so for this one, I was kind of in a dilemma because I wanted to make it each square 10 stitches across. And because I wanted it 10, I had to figure out in, in tens, make sure that when I line up on the side, they're gonna be still a checkered pattern. If I did an odd number of squares, when I would line it up on the side, they would be the same color. So I had to do an even amount, so that way it starts off with like pink and ends with orange. You know what I mean? Usually my sleeves are a lot more billowy, and so I was kind of worried how they were gonna fit. And I even like attached everything together, and then when I did that, I'm like, is it even gonna fit me? With the sleeves, usually my sleeves start down here because there's more chains across. So that was kind of where I was kind of getting nervous, especially if you're joining a bunch of stuff and it's like right here. I feel like if you would close your arm, it would get really bunched up and you would feel it and I'd, I'd feel uncomfortable. It's still okay. I like the measurements and the length of the sleeve originally, originally do five this way because when I placed it on my arm and I did five, it seemed the right length. But then I put my arm down and it kind of moved up a little bit. And so I knew I had to do six by six. Again, if I wasn't gonna do the cuff, I think I probably would have made this longer, but I always do cuffs on all my projects. I don't think it's too bulky and I don't think it's too tight. And the worst is when it's bulky and tight, I'm not gonna wear it. But this is actually really nice. And what sucks is that we've had really warm weather for the beginning of April. So I don't know how many times I'm gonna be able to wear this until it's too hot to wear it. Why do I always make the cutest things near spring and summer when I can't wear them anymore? <laughs> because of the, the heat. Not that it gets really, really hot, but it still gets really, really hot. Anywho, uh, let's kind of move on to the collar. The collar, as you can see, it's a little wonky. This side here doesn't really have a good point, and then this one has a really nice point. It is what it is, like what are you gonna do? And I did tack them down. So all I did was I got the same string and just with a yarn needle, 
probably didn't even need a yard needle and just kind of like sewed it down and gave it like a double knot and it's staying down this one here is just a little bit lower than this so maybe maybe i'll fix that it's fine i still haven't uh woven in the ends yet you see any yarn sticking out no you don't and then the back of the collar as you can see all attached i think what i would do in the future because i love this collar i think this collar is actually a lot better fitted the other collars i do they're not really a turtleneck they're more of a mock neck but sometimes they get really tight here especially when i first start wearing it once i wear them in they get a little bit looser but this fits so nice around my neck i don't feel like constricted it's nice something I would do though in the future is instead of making it like one piece and I just swapped the colors in between at the back I'd make it in two different pieces so I would have make one pink one orange or whatever colors I'm using right I'd make two of them and then in the back I wouldn't attach it I would leave like a space and I feel like maybe my head be able to fit in here just a little bit better but I really do like how I attached it it doesn't even look like it's two separate pieces it looks like I crocheted it on here but I didn't I used two and a half skein no two and three quarters skeins of the pink two full skeins of orange plus a little bit from the orange it's, it's right over there let me get it for you so two and a half of orange I did end up buying four of each color I only had to buy three of each color this color is really pretty I would love to maybe make a tote bag a hat some other things so I do have the yarn also when I did buy the yarn it was all 30% off so I got a good deal on it I'm gonna go tally up how long it took me to make this I forgot to do that 20 minutes later I tallied it up I should have done this last night but I just I didn't roughly this took me 27 hours and 30 minutes give or take I think this is one of my wicker projects yeah my follow boy one was 34 hours when it's a new project, a new design, a new pattern, a new layout for like what I'm making, it does take me a little bit longer because while I'm crocheting, I might take 30 minutes to an hour just to like figure out where I am, take something apart, put something back together. I don't think I took anything apart for this project except for the ribbing on the bottom. And, and here's the thing, two to three hours was just working on the ribbing. It takes me forever to do it because it is so boring and so tedious. In total, this probably took me two and a half weeks, three weeks to make. And I mean, if you don't have to film and edit and do other things, you probably can make this a lot faster than I did. Overall, I give this like a 10 out of 10. I think it is a darling and I love this collar. And I think going forward, I might just make all my crochet projects with this collar because it fits really nice, except for it doesn't fit over my head, but I can troubleshoot that. I can fix that. Anyways, I think that does it for this video. I can't think of anything else to say. I think that's pretty much it. If you are new to my channel, like sewing, thrifting, crafting, and of course crocheting, why not hit that subscribe button? You can also follow me on my Instagram and my TikTok. I think that's it. So y'all have a good day now.